and a zoning committee meeting to order. Today is Tuesday, February 11th, and it is 6.44 p.m. If I can please have a moment of silent meditation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Madam Clerk, may I please have roll call? Candidates. Roll call. Um, Chairperson Cubillos. Here. Vice Chair Nickerson will not be in tonight. Um, Member Urbom. Finally present. Member Roman. Here. Also present for the record, Janice Jacoby, Village Clerk, Christy Alou, Village Manager, um, Norman Powell, Interim Village Attorney. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for coming to tonight's meeting. Uh, last month, the uh, count committee and council agreed that um, planning and zoning should be meeting every month, given the amount of uh, activities and, and projects that we may have coming forward. And planning and zoning, and actually every committee is the opportunity for residents to come out and voice their opinion as it's a workshop committee. Um, I have a challenge, though. Uh, and unfortunately, even though it was my great idea to do this every month, um, I have to leave at 7.30 tonight. I have an emergency that I cannot get out of. I was made aware that Vice Mint Nickerson is not going to be here, and with him not being here, there is no quorum after I leave. Um, with that said, uh, we have a decision to make, and I, and I don't make decisions by myself. I, I, I look towards the committee and, and the residents who are here today because while I mentioned it to um, the uh, agenda items that you know there's a possibility that we may have to reschedule, what have you. Their presentation is only going to take maybe two, two and a half minutes. But all of you who are here today, which I can count on two hands, if not more than that, our constituents and residents and neighboring um, homes of the potential project are going to want to speak, and you have every right to speak. Um, so I'm in a pickle. Um, because while we can see the skate project, nothing that is of an item that needs to be voted can happen with only two members on the committee, um, because if, uh, there must be three. With that said, our options are to um, let the meeting run till about 7.25 to see how far we can get um, and um, continue the meeting next month or completely postpone the meeting. And I open it up to uh, the committee. Councilperson Roman, Councilperson uh, uh, Urban. And again, I do apologize. If anybody who knows me, I don't do this. I don't miss meetings. I don't reschedule meetings. I'm always present. But an emergency came up, and I have to leave at 730. There's just no other way around it for me tonight. Um, so I would say that uh, certainly my understanding of that is I had to get my daughter somewhere, which is why I was late, and I do sincerely apologize to absolutely everybody here. Um, I would, looking at agenda items F1, 2, 3, and 4, um, uh, I know the importance of F3 to us, but I'm curious to know if by focusing on F1 and 2, if that might not be possible to achieve by 7.30. That's my initial thought. Councilperson Roman? I'm good with that. So we can see how far we go, we get, better said. Um, but please understand that as flexible as I have been and I am, I cannot be flexible tonight. I have to exit by 7.30. So that means that I will, um, if there's any resident or whoever's on the, on the podium, if I have to cut you off, um, I will have to do so at 7.25. So are we good with that? Oh, I thought you were sick. Welcome, our planner, okay. Um, with that said, I, I um, now for the skate park, that's a presentation. There's going to be no voting on that. That presentation can happen. Um, the real big item will be the special exception that's going to require a vote. And that's where, um, that's the action item because it's an action item. Um, we'll, uh, we'll see how far we can get in terms of listening to the applicant who's here and as well as listening to all of our uh, residents who are here this evening as well. I have no problem with that. 
So if that's what the if that's the, the pleasure of the committee, I'm more than welcome. I have no problem doing so. So what we'll do before I go to approval of the agenda, we'll strike um, F3, F4, and we'll leave F1, F2. If I can get a motion to approve the agenda striking F3 and F4. I would make a motion to approve the agenda with those items striked. Okay, Councilperson Urban has made a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Councilperson uh, Roman. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any nays? Hearing none, the agenda passes with the modification of striking out F3 and F4 that we will move to March. Um, with that said, um, let's go ahead and get a motion to approval of the minutes for January 21st, planning and zoning. Has any member of the committee had the opportunity to read them? I browse through them. I'm okay passing them if we're... Yeah, I think I'm okay, just a standard. Uh, there's a motion made yeah. by Councilperson Roman to pass the minutes. There's a second by Councilperson Urban. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any nays? Hearing none, the minutes for our planning and zoning committee meeting from January 21st will now be posted on the website. With that said, we're going to move right into F1. We have a presentation of a recreational skate park that is going to be in our Zone 5 annexed area. I believe the, the owner of the property uh, and the architect are here this evening. Please come to the podium, announce your name and address for the record. Hi, nice to meet you guys. I'm Jonathan Strauss. I'm, I'm actually leasing the property. The owner of the property is the, the, is the Bailey family, Don Bailey Jr. And if everybody knows the naked carpet guy, that's <laughs> right behind there. Um, do, you, do you guys want the other group to go before us since they have a lot more pressure on them or there's a lot of residents that hear us talk? Um, if informative. you're that amenable to doing that, I, I'm, I think everybody here probably would be in it's very gracious yeah, of you we'll okay and i think their their video is already up waiting right we'll okay it was nice meeting you uh, we'll see you shortly um if we can have the um um and while you all are doing that i'm gonna go ahead and have our attorney clarify um when it comes to a special exception of this um our committee does become quasi judicial when i have the attorney mm -hmm. Um, um, define that on the record, please. Thank you, Madam um, Mayor. There's a couple of things I should clarify also, just so that the applicant is well aware of what is um, presented today. We have a bare quorum, so to the extent that we get to the um, posture where there's a vote of the council, it would have to be unanimous. Um, I say that because sometimes applicants don't want to go forward if they have to get a unanimous um, vote of the council. The second thing, which I don't believe the mayor clarified, is that once um, we don't no longer have a quorum, the meeting has to end. Okay. Um, so also, the, the last um, comment here is that this is a quasi-judicial proceeding, and there's a statement that has to be read into the record concerning how um, quasi-judicial proceedings are conducted. So if you would allow me a few minutes just to read that into the record so that everyone who is on the dais and also in attendance is aware of what the process is. Florida courts have determined that there are certain types of matters, including the following application, which are to be treated differently than other issues considered by the, the council. Most decisions of the village council are legislative, legislative in nature, which means that the council is acting as a policy-making body. In contrast, in quasi-judicial matters, the council is applying existing rules and policies to a factual situation and is therefore acting like a judge or a jury in a courtroom. In such cases, the courts have decided that due process and fundamental fairness requires that more, a more formal process be followed by the village. The village's procedures shall be as follows. Anyone who wishes to speak shall be collectively sworn in by the village clerk. The hearing shall be conducted in an informal manner. I will read the title of the item to be considered. Village staff will present a brief synopsis of the application and a recommendation. Next, though, there will be a presentation by the applicant. The, the council will hear from the participants in favor or in opposition to the application. All witnesses are subject to cross-examination by the village staff, council, and the applicant. A participant may request that the village council ask questions of a witness. The applicant and staff may make concluding remarks no further presentation or testimony shall be permitted, and the public hearing shall be closed. All decisions of the council must be based on competent and substantial evidence presented at this hearing. All backup materials presented 
at the hearing will automatically become a part of the record of the hearing. All approval will be subject to staff recommended conditions unless otherwise stated in the motion for approval. Could you swear everyone in who will be testifying? Yes. Anyone who wishes to testify in these proceedings, please stand and the clerk will swear you all in. Excuse me? Villagers as well? Yes. Anyone who, is, who intends on testifying or presenting any um, information today, just raise your right hand and solemnly swear to tell the truth. So I hope you got it. Thank you. Okay, so the first, the first item is a special exception by Cristo Ray Miami High School, um, 205 Northeast 87th Street. The um, staff should present first, and then the applicant second. Good evening, Camila Sabla for Serbia Design. This application is for a site plan special exception approval for the educational use of a high school within the existing building structure at 205 Northeast 87th Street in El Portal, which pursuant to Article 3 uses in Z4 section of the Code of Ordinances requires approval by process of special exception. Um, the, well, should we, we let them present the actual? When you, when you present for this, let me know if you have a second. Without a recommendation. to the application request the app is to uh, the applicant wishes to reestablish the former use of the property as a school with the with the establishment of a private Catholic high school within the existing building structure in considering the use for a special exception the committee must especially consider events that events and activities do not exceed the noise volume permitted by the villages noise ordinance in particular regarding the abutting residential properties to the east of the site After reviewing uh, our findings, the planning and zoning uh, planning staff recommends approval with conditions for the site plan review and special exception of this mix of the high school project with the following conditions. That the submittal package dated um, February 6th of 2020, that the proposed project is in conformance with the submittal package dated February 6th and all subsequent revisions that all representations proffered by the applicant as part of the review of the application at public hearings and that all comments made by staff, reviewers, and submitted to the applicant be addressed prior to issuing the permit. That is our recommendation. Um, thank you, Camila. I'm gonna go ahead and have the applicant uh, present. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Good evening, Mayor Cabillos, Councilperson Roman, Councilperson Orban, uh, Village Manager Alou, Attorney and Clerk, and uh, residents of uh, El Portal. My name is Rudy Checky. I'm the co-chair of the Board of Trustees of Cristo Rey Miami High School. I really want to thank you for this opportunity to visit with you again. Uh, we were here on uh, January 12th and made a, a rather lengthy presentation Based on the time frame tonight, um, we're going to cut that back uh, substantially. But I, I think it's important that those, especially members uh, of, the, of the residents here, uh, get to see a real short uh, two and a half minute video about what Cristo Rey High School is, uh, about the fact that we're the, we will be the number 38 school in the country. We have graduated 18,000 students. Uh, we are a uh, Catholic school. We are 60% Catholic participants and 40% non-Catholic. Um, we are open to everyone. So with that, if, you, if we can uh, just run a little two-minute video just to give you a feel for it, uh, I'll do that.
transform their neighborhoods to transform the world we like to say that our goal is to arm students with the skills and the content knowledge and the passion and the love so that they can put a dent in the universe and we truly believe that that we can do that so the most unique thing about an education at Cristo Rey Philadelphia High School is that all of our students have jobs. Um, we are part of a network of 32 schools across the country, um, all with the goal of providing a quality college prep education um, for students in the cities in which the Cristo Rey School is located in. Um, and the way that that works is that students have an internship every single year, um, one day a week, every week, instead of going to classes, students actually go to work um, at places like Deloitte, Comcast, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. For the past three years, I worked at J.G. Wentworth, my freshman, sophomore, and junior year, I worked at J.G. Wentworth. Um, basically, I worked with the customer service, and my last year, my junior year there, um, I worked with the marketing department. I work at Comcast in the IT department. I always stayed at Comcast for like the past three years. Right now, I'm my own supervisor. I supervise the other interns in my, um, in my grade. We teach and love and lead with a sense of urgency, making sure that every minute in the classroom counts, making sure that every interaction in the hallway is one that results in a student feeling that they are loved and valued. Students need to walk out the door every day feeling challenged and tired, but at the same time, realizing that they're extraordinary and sacred and beautiful. Honestly, I, I just love just the love that goes around Crystal Lake. Our, when we have uh, assemblies in the morning, our principal starts off and ends every speech that he gives us with, I love you guys. And then he just goes into a speech. So it's like, you get reminded of like just love every single day. Like in the classrooms, your teacher, they will stay hours at the school just to make sure that you gain one concept. Uh, Crystal Ray means family. Um, love, determination, hard work, and persistence. That's the story in Philadelphia, and it's also the story in 36 other cities, and it will be the story in Miami, too. Um, so really, what, what we want to impart to you tonight is that we want to be your neighbor, and we want to be a community partner. We want to bring beauty and life back to the parcel of land that sits on vacant for the last 12 years on, uh, on 87th and uh, Northeast 2nd. We want to be involved with the village, and we really want the village to be involved with us. We want to make this a community event. We want participation, and we want, we want all, all people of the village to enjoy what we propose to do at the site. We want to put El Portal on the map along with those other schools that we currently have um, in, our, in our network. So um, just to bring you up to date, we're 38 schools. Last year, the students earned $75 million. Every penny of it went to pay for their own education. Uh, virtually 100% of our graduates go to college. And our job is not only to get them into college, uh, but through college. And we graduate our students at three times the rate of their peer group. It's a, it's a proven entity, and it's been around since 1996. Here's our plan. We want to preserve and beautify the existing structure. We're not going to expand it. We want to keep that structure exactly as it is. We will preserve the chapel. The chapel will be restored as a place for congregation of students and residents of El Portal. Our school will be small. We're looking at approximately 100 students per class. The freshman year will start out with 100, and then it'll increase by 100 thereafter until we reach our 400 student uh, limit. Uh, there's a possibility it could go to, to a little bit more, like, like 120, but right now our thought is we're going to have 100 students per class. The interesting part about it is that we will never have that school at full capacity because there will only be 75% of the students at school at any time. 
A quarter of those students will be at the workforce, and they'll be at companies that you see here exhibited. All these companies have agreed to hire our freshman year of students. Our kids will not be chauffeur-driven to the school. Many will take the bus, perhaps many will take, um, take the bike, and our students will not be permitted to drive to the school. We're very cognizant of the traffic issues here in El Portal. There will be adequate pickup and drop and drop off. There will be zero tolerance for any form of indiscretions, for fighting, for drugs, any form of indiscretion is not gonna be accepted or welcomed in our school. Our students wear uniforms. There will be no noise or light pollution from our properties. It'll be quiet in the day and it'll be quiet at night. The eastern boundary will be beautifully landscaped and we wanna make sure that that we, uh, we, we comply with the requests of the, uh, of the village here. So um, in, in closing, we'll try to keep this really short. We, we, are, we are on a fast track, as, as we mentioned to the, to, to the uh, council before. Uh, our first uh, 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 students come to the school at the end of August of, of this year. We have uh, arranged for some temporary space to the extent that we would need it if we can't complete the construction uh, that's required to bring our first year of students in. Um, if approved, we think we can get our first, our first class in, but as I said, we have a contingency plan if we don't. We hope that you will look favorably upon our application. I thank you very, very much for your attention at last meeting and, and your attention at this meeting. And at this point, I'd like to uh, open it up for questions or um, answer the staff's uh, recommendations. Um, thank you, Rudy. Um, can we have your attorney come forward and um, speak and walk us through the um, special session application? Is he here too? If you'd like. I'm, I'm happy to do that myself. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Either you or your attorney, of course. I'll be, I'll be happy to do it. Okay. Okay, so um, I'll answer each in, in the order that was, uh, that was uh, denoted. Uh, provide a bike rack. Um, th there's no doubt about that recommendation. We anticipate students coming uh, by bike and we certainly will have as many bike racks as necessary to support those students, not a problem. Provide additional landscape to mask parking from the frontage, that's not a problem either. We, we really plan to, to landscape this property and, and make it a real gem of El Portal and a real gem for Miami. Remove the chain link fence on the northeast corner. We had an uh, issue before as to who really owns that fence. So if, to the extent that we own it and we can remove it, we're happy to do that, but, but if we don't, obviously we can't. So if we can, if we can clarify that, I'm happy to comply with your, your request, except I just don't feel like I can, I can remove somebody else's chain link fence. Uh, pro provide additional information on any proposed signage. We anticipate using only the monument that's currently uh, on the premises. That will be our sign. Um, to the extent that we need additional signage, for example, if we're gonna have a building dedicated to a particular donor, we would stay within the code requirements in order to do that. The uh, repurpose abutting residential property proposed as a hard court. Our, our concept for the hard court was a recreational area for our students, uh, not open to the public. Um, it, it, is, um, it is something that we believe that we can manage in terms of noise or light, et cetera. Um, that being said, if you are not comfortable with it, we will take whatever steps required to make you comfortable with that. Uh, we certainly do not want that to be, uh, to be a, a deal breaker for us. We're totally cognizant. We, we definitely do not want to create any kind of uh, environment that's gonna be in any way intruding upon the peace and quiet of the direct neighbors or the village itself. So uh, those were the, those were the uh, areas of uh, recommendation um, and I, we are more than happy to comply with each and every one of them. Thank you. Um, if it is okay with the committee, um, because we have already um, heard from the applicant and because we have um, so many residents in our um, the audience this evening, and due to the timing, are you okay if I just open up a public hearing? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you, Rudy, um, Camila. And I'll just ask the residents, um, you're probably gonna have most questions, probably to the applicant or to us. Just perhaps maybe use this microphone so that you're not speaking from the same microphone. So with that said, I'm gonna close the um, PNZ committee meeting and open up for public hearing. Uh, when you come to the podium, please state your name and address for the record. Over here, so, so they can use that, yes.
Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council, or excuse me, committee. My name is Courtney Kirk, 265 Northeast 87th Street. That would be three houses down from the proposed uh, school. Uh, I'd like to start off by saying I hope I'm not coming across as angry, but I expect I will at some point during this uh, discussion. We've had issues when a charter school tried to come in before. We, again, are basically making very, very similar arguments. Um, this is a special exception. It is not something that is guaranteed by right. And in that, the council members and committee members have a weighty responsibility to look at the code in its entirety and make a decision that is in the best interests of the El Portal residents. We've heard 400 students. We've heard maybe 120 a class. There's a certain uh, concern that once the special exception is granted, that then it becomes not a zoning issue, it becomes simply a build-out code issue. So there's significant concern there. Let me tell you why I think this is bad for El Portal and does not meet either the goals nor requirements. First of all, it's inappropriate for El Portal as this will cost us actual dollars. This is currently a property that provides El Portal between sixteen and seventeen thousand dollars a year. If the um, sanctuary, as originally envisioned and, and approved, went in, that number would be closer to forty to fifty thousand a year. We will likely need additional policing costs. This is simply like every other school does at. Uh, uh, entry time and exit time to deal with traffic, etc. Those are costs that a school that is a nonprofit or Catholic organization would not need to pay. And we, of course, would be on the hook for it. Also, given all the traffic issues, it makes the area a less desirable neighborhood. As stated in the prior um, committee meeting, this is not targeted at any El Portal residents. While if they met, the requirements they would likely be allowed to apply, the requirements do not are not targeting in any way El Portal's residents. Let's also talk about the traffic. The worst fine times for traffic are the morning rush hour backup from Northeast 2nd to Northeast 3rd. And in case anybody wants to see it, I took pictures yesterday. All the way back to Northeast 3rd, people trying to come out. This was just a normal Monday, nothing, nothing unusual, no big traffic jams, nothing was shut down on 95, all that sort of thing. Secondly, the traffic study that was presented was wholly inadequate. Not only is it statistically based and not based in reality, as in no cycle counts, no road traffic counts, it has two, uh, well, three major issues. One. It counts on an illegal left turn coming out of their property. You are not allowed to go on 87th to the left. That's crossing over two double yellow lines. The, any person who's worked with traffic or has studied at all would know that. The traffic study also states it would have 862 daily trips. Yet when they go to distribute that, they say only 161 during uh, normal business hour, uh, during the morning rush hour. If you're estimating 431 in, I can't imagine that the school would have 250 odd traffic uh, entrances during a time that's not coming into school. Secondly, if you look at 88th Street and you look at what the F. Green Book has, which is what you are supposed to have for road widths, etc., neither part of either to the east or to the west of their exits on 88th Street are viable for two way traffic. They are 15 feet to the east and 17 feet to the west. A, uh, the Green Book says that for a 20 to 25 mile an hour, not 30 like it is, it's got to be 9 to 10 feet in each side. That assumes that you don't have pedestrian traffic nor bike traffic, which of course, since there is no sidewalk through that entire street, people walk their dogs, their strollers, their selves in the street. If it's, this, if it's to go on the, by the Green Book for a 30 mile an hour zone, it needs to be 10 to 11 feet in each direction for residential 30 mile an hour zones. Again, that's the Green Book. I encourage people to look it up. Additionally, we're a tree city. I was at the Arbor Day event where Mayor Cubillos, um, in 2017, we, we had a wonderful, wonderful event. Um, 
Anybody who's familiar with El Portal knows we take our tree canopy very, very seriously. One of the things the Beacon Council says about us is a small, quiet, diverse city, blah, 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 talks about majestic oak trees. Um, the mayor even said we, uh, on the 2017 Arbor Day, were celebrating our beautiful and extensive tree canopy. Yet part of their um, site plan calls for cutting down oak trees, some of them 48 inches in size. Think about the number of centuries that those had to grow. And these are not things that can be moved. These things have 70 to 90 feet deep roots. You're not going to move that. You're going to kill it. Let's talk about where the zoning code, and if I, it, Juan is here for, or for the zoning? OK. A um, couple of things that say comply, but the numbers don't add up. The secondary frontage build out is 50% minimum, yet, this is on page two, yet you've got 29% and 44%, yet it says it complies. That's confusing to me. The spaces that you're supposed to have for parking, 39 plus 40 plus 4 is, 70, is 83. You've got 76 spaces, yet it says it complies. Um, there are certain things that are NA, again, unclear as to why we're rushing this through instead of doing a proper job. We don't know how they're doing their sewer or septic. That was a big issue with the last project. We know it's an issue in El Portal with the rising, uh, with the, the rising tides and the, the groundwater. Then let's go into looking at section 17-59. And there are, let's take a moment to actually be very thankful that the founders of El Portal and the prior councils were very clear in their wording. They didn't say a little, they didn't say some. In many cases, they said any, okay? And there's a reason to take that into consideration. So some of the ones where the claims that um, they meet these requirements, uh, I strongly challenge and I urge the council to hold back and say this is not in fact good for El Portal. These include Make requirements as to the location of such parking spaces and driveways, giving access thereto and of vehicular access to the site that will protect the public safety and serve public convenience. If you're going on a road that is already too small for two-way traffic and you're adding 150 cars during, or excuse me, 141, don't want to exaggerate, uh, excuse me, 161 during the morning rush hour, you're going to have accidents. You're going to have people get hurt. This is not for the public convenience. Assure a harmonious relation between the uses to which the site plan applies and the existing and prospective residential and other development in the city. So, in the vicinity, excuse me. So, um, my neighbors, Joni and Ken, just spent a significant amount of money putting in a beautiful back deck. And what is going to be eight feet or 10 feet from that back deck? A basketball court with now no trees. So, their beautiful backyard that they have taken great care of is now no longer usable in the way that they intended. Next, there shall be no noise or vibration resulting in or connection with the use that is perceptible from any part of any district. I think we can all agree that clearly will fail. The volume and type of vehicular traffic associated with such use, particularly its impact on residential streets, must be appropriate to the location and the surrounding road network. As I've just stated, the road network does not support what they're asking for. Um, compliance with the goals, objectives, and policies of the village's adopted comprehensive plan. Now, when we did the charrette many years ago, this location was supposed to be the anchor to our down, or excuse me, to our main street. It was supposed to spur other small businesses and that sort of thing. When you put a school there, you are going to kill that charrette. I humbly ask that you look at what the facts are and what the law is and vote down this in the best interest of El Portel. Thank you. May I respond to that? Um, yes, just for purposes of time, it's 719. But yes, That's fine. I'm sure we're not going to And then I'm going to the call it the next. Why don't we just let the, why don't we let, um, go ahead and respond. No, I, I appreciate the comments, um, uh, but I do want to uh, mention a few things. We're happy to limit our students. I mean, if I said 
420, uh, 420 or 460. If you're happy with 450 or 400, we're fine with that. Uh, with respect to taxes, there's something called a pilot program. We can, in fact, pay taxes, and at our last, co at our last committee meeting, we offered to do that. So we're not going to try to to beat you out of your taxes. We, we definitely are not going to do that. I told you we want to be good neighbors, and I really mean it. With respect to traffic issues, I'm going to ask John Kim to respond to those issues. But and perhaps we don't have enough time to do that tonight. Um, and so, John, if you want to respond to them. With respect to s uh, sewer, um, um, we have the ability to put up, put up what, do you, what do you call that, Otto? What's the station? A pump station to connect to the sewer. We know exactly what we need to do there. Uh, noise or vibration, like I said, we'll take that court away. I didn't, I didn't argue with them. If they suggested you want the, we want the court away, we do. With respect to the trees, I wasn't aware that we're cutting any trees down because we're not even changing the structure of the, we're not even changing the structure of the building. That building is remaining intact. I don't know why trees have to come down, but I'd sort of like to find out, and uh, we will address that issue. Say again. If, well, if, we, if we don't if, have if, a court, we don't take I, I, the trees. I just, I got to say something. Only speak if you're at the podium, please. Okay. It's the only way we can have order. So if there's no, if there, if a court, do, if there's no court, there's no trees coming down. So I, I really think we, if we, if you want to work with us, we're happy to work with you. If you want to wait and see what what could p possibly develop there, that's your decision. That's the council's decision. We're here to give you a remedy, a good remedy, to be a good neighbor, to make a good place for your families too, not only ours. You said your kids or your, your people aren't going to be involved. 50% of this community is African American. 60% of our school is African American. 30% is Hispanic. 40% of our school is Hispanic. So, I mean, I'm just trying to address the issues. I have only a limited amount of time, and I'd like to come back, and I'd like to discuss them with you. Because, I mean, we're, we're providing you an alternative. And if you don't want that alternative, that's fine. Just let us know, as, as we had our first committee meeting. Mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of time. You might say, well, why, why are we rushing things? But, you know, it's up to you guys. Whatever you guys decide to do, if you want to postpone this to another time, we're happy to do that. And perhaps that's in the best interest of the, of the further discussion. Um, um, uh, just for timing, I would like to hear from another resident because I think it's important that we hear as many as we can given a time frame so that um, clearly we're, no decision is really going to be made tonight, but I think it's important for the applicant to hear as many residents so you know exactly what you may or, you know, if, if this is going to move forward, what you have to do, what not have to do. Or, so I'd like to hear of another resident. So um, with that said, we're still in public comments. If you, if there's any other residents in, um, that would like to come up and, sp and, and go to the podium and speak your concerns or recommendations or um, suggestions or likes or dislikes. Just state your name and address for the record. Hi, I'm uh, Ken Hector, 260 Northeast 88th Street. I am uh, the basketball court sideline. So I'll show you what where I am. Well, your court over there. Um, basically, uh, I have some concerns. Uh, our property abuts that uh, green area which over time we were told was going to be become a green area no matter who was taking over the building called this sanctuary. Um, as uh, Courtney Kirk said earlier, we, my wife and I, we spent uh, tens of thousands of dollars to put a deck in so we can get in our backyard, see nature, uh, love the trees that we've, we've had in our backyard, and we worked so hard to do that and then to have those taken down in order to put uh, a court up for a, a high school. Uh, I don't know how many people could put up their hand and say, I got a basketball court five feet from your home. I'm sure nobody would, but I could basically say that. It's right next to my garage. Um, and to take that, that whole area down, you will have to take down four oak trees that are older than me. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna go over uh, the traffic issues, I think Courtney did a great job with that. Uh, my main concern is to, uh, is to have the property remain, to be part of the community, um, to be used in a, in a good way that blends with us. And so uh, maybe your project works with that. I really don't know. Um, but I just want to make my concerns heard as being a, uh, your neighbor to the east. I totally appreciate uh, your concerns, and as I said, the basketball court is a non-entity. The trees will not be moved, and we will make sure that, that you're, you are happy with whatever we put there as a buffer. Uh, the noise will be limited if there's no basketball court there. 
I'm, I don't want this to end the project. I really want to continue the discussion, and, and hopefully we can do uh, it uh, another time. Yeah, Ru Rudy, given with time's sake, is there any other resident that would like to come up and state anything? Because I think it's important that the more that the applicant hears, the better that they, they and we can all move forward. It's 724. And, I, and, I, and again, I am so sorry about this, but. Joni Hector, 260 Northeast 88th Street, Ken's wife. Um, I have to say a lot of how I feel about this is extremely impressed with the whole idea of it. My issue is obviously whether or not it fits in with the village of El Portel and fits in with my lifestyle. I've been a resident here since 1984 in that house and seen a lot of changes. I have one question for you right now, and I'll limit it to that. You talked about a pump station. I thought I heard the word pump station. Those are pretty darn big. Where would that go if that's what we're looking for for a septic? This is Gus Pereira. He's the uh, architect. And I'm, I'm also a board member of Christian. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Augustin Barra, uh, 5030 Southwest 65 Avenue. The pump station goes on the ground. You don't see it. And, and, and the reason we have to have a pump station is because it's a force main, so we can't do a gravity connection. So that's why it has to be a pump station. Okay. Um, I want to thank the applicants. I want to thank th the residents. Amy, Mihu, LeBron, come come to the podium. It's 725. You're waiting. Hi, 725. State your name, state your name, name and address for the record. Amy Mayhew, 255 Northeast 88th Street. The pump station, it's running off of what? We're still working with Miami-Dade Water and Sewer. It would either be on 87th Street or on Northeast 2nd Avenue. That hasn't been finalized yet. But what's the power source? Oh, it'll, it be, it'll be electric, and it'll have a backup generator to go with it. So then what happens when we lose power the way we informally do, and the generator also fails? Because that, 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 that well happens. Well, then there won't be students in the school, so there won't be any sewage going into the sewer system at that point. Why is it assumption that there wouldn't be any students in the school? Because there's no power. Uh, but what if they're in the school at the time when the power goes out? I, I'm only saying this because, I, as Joni may be aware, or other residents who live on 88th yeah. Street, we lose power when someone sneezes. Right. Um, and that's just from the fact that we have a lot of trees and we have above ground lines. Um, so I, I'm I concerned mean, that, like, with septic, with sewage running through a pump station and a pump station being re relied on power right. and power being an issue with us right. and generators failing or generators need to be turned on and, and having that, what happens when all those well, things happen? And I'm, I'm only asking just because it's something to think about now and to try and address now as it's something that would matter to us and our, and our neighbors and, right. our, and the residents around. I mean, the, the school's gonna have a generator the pump station is going to have a generator. Um, I don't know what else we can tell you. So if, if there's no power, then we can come into an agreement where we can do some covenant with running with the land that if there's no power, then we shut down the school. But there's pump stations all over Dade County. And, and they, they fail. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm bringing it up, because they fail. And they also tend to not be underground. They tend to be above ground and massive. It depends, again, on the pump station. This is not a massive pump station. The ones you're talking about could be a pump station that's used to pump station yeah, like different to, version, yeah. to a whole area, mm -hmm. right? This is a pump station for only one specific property. There are big pump stations. Right across the street from the arena is a massive pump station that pumps the water out to the bay, to the, to the bay mm -hmm. right? That's not what this is. This is a pump station that's going to pump out for 400 students. It's going to be a small pump station. It's going to be underground. It's going to have a backup generator. That's, that's going to be part of it. Okay. Um, th uh, thank you, and thank you. Um, for those residents that did not come forward, I really encourage you, if you did not, um, if your concerns are different than it was Courtney and Ken and Amy, I kindly ask you to email the manager, because I think it's important that the applicant gets it, um, so that when we come back again to meet, that, that either you have answers or they don't have answers. Um, so with that said, again, I, I reiterate to every single resident, if you have concerns other than the ones that the three residents, Amy, Ken, and Courtney addressed this evening, um, please email it to the manager so that the manager can assure that the applicant gets it. Um, as you all know, we, I, I, have, I must end the meeting. I apologize to the committee. 
I apologize to every single uh, one, one of you, um, but, but I really do have to go. It's actually a flight I have to catch, and it's not for fun at all. Um, because if it wasn't the flight, I would, I would, I would keep going. Um, but again, I want to thank you all. I want to, I want to thank the applicant, and I want to thank the skate um, uh, architect. And uh, thank you for for being so uh, uh, gracious to allow them to go first. Um, I will reschedule the meeting. I have no problem doing that. I will get with the clerk. We are meeting every single month, so this meeting would be the second Tuesday um, next month, unless we need to meet earlier for some reason, which might be a little difficult um, because I think you know February is relatively short. Um, before I wrap up, um, does I want to close public comments and it open up to the committee. Anything else that you guys would like to add before I ask for an adjournment? I just have one question. Uh, by show of hands, could I see who the residents in the audience are? There's plenty. Okay. All right. Um, any other? Um, okay. Hearing none, again, I thank each and every single one of you. Rudy, you'll hear from the manager as far as what the next step may be. Juan, thank you for being here. I know you're incredibly sick. Um, may I ask for a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Motion's been uh, made by Councilperson Roman. Is there a second? I will second. Councilperson Irma, a second, and it is 7.30 p.m. Our planning and zoning committee does conclude um, on February uh, uh, 11th. Thank you.